Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Ty Lern, and today we are going to be talking about what would have happened had Trunks traveled back in the past when the Boo Saga happened. A lot of people have already done this what if, such as Quaman, Saiyan Scholar, etc. So I figured why not give my own take on the matter. Now this what if in particular is a one shot what if, and if you guys want to see more of those, comment down below what types of what ifs you would like me to do, and I'll see if I can get to them. But with all that out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about what would have happened had Trunks traveled back in the Boo Saga. Hope you guys enjoy. We start our story off in the future timeline. Currently, Trunks himself would have been engaging in a heated battle against Deborah. Shin had just died and Trunks would be powering up to finish off Deborah, and Deborah here powers up as well and the two get ready to rush at each other. And this is where our story begins to change. Because of these two taking a moment to power up, this is enough energy to actually release Majin Buu in this timeline and when he is released, he would slap not only Deborah but also Trunks. Trunks is seemingly killed in an explosion near a mountainside while Deborah is turned into a cookie and Buu eats him. Trunks would then reveal to everybody last second he put up a barrier just to barely survive and it's at that point he would then fly back to Capsule Corp and would tell his mom to prepare the time machine. Bulma would reveal to future Trunks that she's actually been keeping the time machine in check and making sure that you know whenever they need to use it they can actually use it and not wait three years for some fuel or something. Trunks says how that's a good idea as he and her need to go now as Majin Buu and Bobbity just sensed Trunks and picked up his energy and are now rushing towards Adam. This is when Trunks and Future Bulma both get into the time machine, and right before Majin Buu and Bobbity are seemingly about to blast it, the time machine then warps into the present timeline. They manage to get away, and they arrive in the age 774, and this is right when the Buu Saga begins, with Gohan going to school and meeting Videl and training her. Trunks and Bulma crash land near Capsule Corp, and Vegeta hearing the noise outside gets ready to fight what he thinks is an intruder, but is actually his future son and wife this time. Trunks before falling into an unconscious state would tell his father that Majin Buu is coming and whenever he falls into an unconscious state, Vegeta would quickly go to Korin's tower to ensure his safety and even future Bulma's safety because she did get injured from the crash and brings them to Senza Beans and whenever those two recover, Trunks would then explain to Vegeta and Bulma about his timeline and what happened with Majin Buu. Trunks explains how Majin Buu not only should be arriving sometime soon and they also have literally have no other choice but to stay here since Trunks needs some way to try and deal with with his version of Majin Buu just like how he did with the androids when he came to the present timeline. Trunks also begins to break down as everything they had left in the future which was very little after what the androids did was taken away from them. Vegeta seeing this would get mad himself and would promise to Bulma and Trunks that whenever this Majin Buu threat arrives he assures Trunks he'll take care of it. But for now Vegeta wants to test his son to see how far he's actually come in terms of power and he would then power up into Master SSJ as the two would then go outside and prepare for a spar where Trunks would not only show off Master Super Saiyan but also Super Saiyan 2 and Vegeta does the same. However, it's at that point Vegeta sees that he's even weaker than his own son and Vegeta would be knocked into base SSJ before then Trunks stops the spar. Vegeta would feel completely embarrassed and would swear to them that he'll find a way to surpass Trunks and also Majin Buu, as he would then go on to take the gravity ship into space and doing intense training in order to try and ascend past his limits. As for Bulma and Trunks, well Bulma would stay at Capsule Corp and just interact with the younger Trunks who would be shocked but finds it pretty cool in the end that he has not only a future version of himself but a future version of his mother. Present and future Trunks would make their way towards Gohan and Goten who are currently training in preparation for the war tournament and Goten would be caught up on everything and what he missed and long story short Trunks and Gohan reunite and Trunks is surprised with Gohan not being as powerful as his teen self. Anyways, in preparation for the World Tournament, Trunks would be training with Gohan, which would lead into him trying to adapt off a much stronger opponent, leading into this Gohan overall becoming a lot more powerful in a short amount of time. However, he isn't going to be, you know, rivaling his teen self or anything. But him having a strong training partner like Trunks is a good start and would be naturally ahead of his canon self, and also Goten and also present Trunks since they are training with Trunks and Gohan as well. And the group trains together until the World Tournament starts, where 
where they not only reunite with Goku and also Trunks sees this timeline's versions of Shin and Kabito. He informs the Z Fighters about the Supreme Kai's and liking canon we still have Gohan getting his energy drained and the Z Fighters being informed about Majin Buu which Trunks would then tell would tell Shin and Kabito how he's not only from the future but he also trained with them in the Supreme Kai world with the Z Sword and they need to do that training now in order to try and attempt to defeat Majin Buu but Kabito would just simply cut him off saying how they wouldn't dare let mortals train with them and besides they don't have time for that right now they seriously can't fall for something as dumb as a time traveler appearing and warning them about Majin Buu, right? I mean, they're Supreme Kai's. Why would mortals warn them? Trunks would get ready to draw his sword saying how he doesn't have time for stupid games and he won't tolerate them allowing Gohan to nearly die to get some information. However, Goku and Gohan break this fight up saying they don't have time for this and the group then heads out to stop Bobbity putting their differences aside. Like in canon, Deborah kills Kibito, turns Krillin and Piccolo into stone, and lures the group to Babidi's hideout with everybody following, Trunks included. Vegeta takes on Pui Pui, Goku then takes on Yakon, revealing to Vegeta that Goku's actually far surpassed Vegeta just like Trunks, and Gohan fighting Deborah would just get Vegeta frustrated, leading into him becoming Majin. And not to mention him fighting Trunks and getting embarrassed by his own son would just be more motivation to get an amp from Bobbidi. Trunks and the others are teleported back to the World Tournament with Vegeta killing innocent people, and this is when Trunks decides to step in. Vegeta quite literally turned to the dark side just to settle some stupid rivalry and just because he's not stronger than his own son or stronger than somebody. Honestly, it's pathetic. Goku would tell Trunks to calm down and would even try to threaten him similar to how he threatened Supreme Kai, but Trunks here is not scared of Goku whatsoever. He will do whatever it takes to try and stop Majin Buu's revival. And if that means taking on his own father and humbling him, then so be it, as he would then tackle his father and fly off to the wasteland. Vegeta would be trying to get Trunks off of him, and eventually he finally does, throwing him into a mountainside. Trunks easily recovers, and the two would then begin fighting, basically at an even level. This is essentially Goku versus Vegeta, but it's father versus son, and Goku would try to intercept, however this would only lead into Vegeta and Trunks just kind of bullying Goku because they're all relative with each other. And due to Goku not being able to stop these two, he decides to power up into his true full power, emerging in the Super Saiyan 3 transformation, and using the remaining time he has in the living world to stop these two and telling them to get their heads in the game. Goku also going Super Saiyan 3 would mean Majin Buu would be revived earlier, and Gohan and Shin are both slapped, with both of them then heading into the Supreme Kai world so that Gohan can do some training. And now here for the story, we could go in multiple directions. However, I think this one is probably the most sensical. I think Trunks and Vegeta knowing that Goku literally used the last bit of time he had on Earth to tell them to put their differences aside and to try and stop Majin Buu, would try and attempt to work together to stop Majin Buu, but right as they're about to leave, Vegeta would just knock out Trunks just like how he knocked out Goku, and like in canon, would still sacrifice himself. After this and Trunks wakes up and realizes Vegeta sacrificed himself, he's gonna try and get the Dragon Balls to revive every Everybody who was killed today, which would include Kibito, and whenever Trunks picks up Kibito's energy again, Trunks will request a Kibito to take him to the Kai world, and Kibito reluctantly does so, and they would see Gohan, Shin, and Goku just all there with Gohan training with the Z Sword. Trunks is glad that Gohan is alive, however, he tells Goku that he's sorry he got carried away and it costed him basically wasting his time on Earth. Goku says that it's not a problem and they just need to simply focus on the threat known as Majin Buu, which would lead into Trunks saying how he and Gohan, after training with the Z Sword for a good bit, could definitely have a chance against them. And this will lead into Gohan training with Trunks with the Z Sword from time to time and vice versa, allowing both of them to get exponentially more powerful. However, like in canon, they would still break the Z Sword and the Elder Kai is released. Now in this timeline, there is no Gotenks being set up and Trunks and Gohan are literally the only chance they have at defeating Majin Buu, so Goku just tells Piccolo to simply stall Majin Buu. They tried everything they could and they even tried working together to fight Majin Buu and even that failed. And seemingly Super Buu is getting ready to destroy the rest of the planet, but that's when Future Trunks decides to jump in since he's stronger than Gohan right now based off the Z Sword training and he can stall time while Gohan gets the Elder Kai boost. And so Trunks will be transported to Earth by Kibito and even getting a change of clothes, changing from the Supreme Kai Gi. Before leaving though, Kibito says good luck to Trunks and he also apologizes for their earlier interaction. Trunks forgives Kibito as he would then rush in to try and save the others against Super Buu, and as he's about to literally kill Piccolo, Goten, and Trunks, Trunks would then kick him into a mountainside, revealing that he's gotten a lot more powerful. Now, it was implied Gohan got significantly stronger with the Z-Sword training, and this is on top of a pretty weak base form. 
I mean, his Super Saiyan 2 form was quite literally just like relative with the Bora, which Vegeta and Goku easily could have just killed them. And this was before the Vegeta Majin Amp. And overall, pre Elder Kai boost Gohan is just down bad in comparison to base Trunks, who would be getting the same gains with the Z Sword as Gohan. I think Trunks' bare minimum should just be at least a little bit above Fat Boo, that way he can stall as much time as he can against Super Boo. And in a 1v1 scenario, Super Boo is just easily outclassing Trunks, however that's when Goten, Trunks, and Piccolo, after recovering some more energy, would decide to give their last remaining bits of energy to Trunks. As Trunks is being amped by the Z Fighters, he would have remembered that he actually kept the broken handled version of the Z Sword, but that is when he ignites it with the key that's currently amping him. Trunks with the Spirit Bomb Sword like amp would finally be able to press Super Boo and seemingly chopping him into bits, would defeat the monster with ease, however that's when Piccolo warns Trunks about Super Boo's regeneration, as he would slowly form himself whole again, and we even see a small chunk of Boo landing on Trunks. As we all know, Super Boo would then begin to absorb Trunks, and Trunks would actually be his first victim, merging into Boo Runks? Brunx? true i don't know what the fuck to call him but you guys get the point super boo future trunks absorbed is born and at that time ultimate gohan is born and is teleported to the field now this version of boo would be weaker than boo tanks since this future trunks is weaker than super boo and go tanks was going to beat super boo in the original version so gohan here is actually able to hold his own against this version of boo but is mainly trying to get future trunks out of them and he realizes the only way for this to happen is for him to get absorbed and like in canon buhan is born and after this point, Goku and Vegeta would then decide to work together, you know, Goku's transported to Earth, Vegeta gets a new body, and essentially the rest of the Buu arc is the same. However, I think whenever Kid Buu is born and blows up Earth, Trunks would be the one to Kai Kai Vegeta him and Goku away from everyone else in order for them to survive, and then Kid Buu would teleport himself there, and this would then lead into the final battle. With the inclusion of Trunks, the three Saiyans and also Fat Buu would prove to be quite the match for Kid Buu. However, in the end, the Spirit Bomb is still required, and whenever Trunks gives his energy to the Spirit Bomb and sees that Kid Buu is still able to overpower Goku, Trunks takes some energy of the Spirit Bomb himself, puts it into his sword, and would essentially poke and distract Kid Buu long enough for Goku's Spirit Bomb to actually make contact so Kid Buu can't overpower it, and so Kid Buu is defeated. Peace is brought to the universe, and Trunks before leaving would do the Elder Kai ritual dance just to make sure he has the power he needs to defeat Majin Buu. And so whenever Trunks gets his potential unlocked and he and Bulma go back to their timeline, Trunks easily defeats Majin Buu, and they can finally go back to rebuilding. The only big difference is that the Goku Black arc is going to be very insignificant in Dragon Ball Super, and that is because Trunks is going to deal with Goku Black because he is strong enough to actually kill him before he can adapt. And this is where we are going to be wrapping up today's what if, and if you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are new to the channel, hit the bell icon, and follow me on Twitter, that will be linked in the description. Be sure to also subscribe to my second channel, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out, have a nice rest of the day everybody.